in Allah's name, the omnipresent, the omnipotent. Glory be to Allah. May the drizzling and mizzling of blessings and bounties be upon our sympathetic and sincere prophet, Hazrat Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. I am Professor Azam Hussain, and today we gonna learn about conditional sentences. Conditional sentences are consisted of two parts of a sentence. Condition is mentioned in one part of the sentence and in the second part of the sentence consequence outcome or result is mentioned condition conditional clause is also known as if clause and while this part of the sentence can be placed in the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence while result outcome consequence clause is known as main clause conditional part of a sentence is started with if or unless or whether method of translation today we gonna learn about two first conditional sentences which are called which are also called probable conditional earlier we have learned about zero conditional sentences in our very first lecture about uh, conditional sentences and now we gonna learn first conditional sentences which are called probable conditional method of translation is it is uh, used this type of uh, conditional sentence it is used to describe the real futuristic events which are very possible when we talk about uh, possibilities about uh, the true real activities likely to happen in the sentence of present or future sentences just like uh, you will be pleased if you receive award method of translation this type of uh, sentences are translated by using this type of method a result uh, has been mentioned earlier first at first and then if and condition is mentioned if you receive award you will be pleased now it's opposite now we have started with if and comma will be added but if you are writing the consequence or main class in the beginning no comma will be placed in between two parts of a sentence if you receive award you will be pleased this is the method to translate this type of sentence if is written first then condition is mentioned and then result is mentioned method of translation if plus condition plus result we shall write if first and condition at second and then result will be mentioned comma will be added in between two parts of a sentence if we are writing a consequence or result or outcome in the first part then no comma will be placed in between two parts of a sentence so this is an important point present indefinite tense is used to translate if clause if part is translated into present indefinite tense and the second part which is the result or outcome or consequence part it is translated into present indefinite tense we use present indefinite tense to translate the clause consisted of consequence result or outcome this is the formula if you can have a look at this if first then subject noun or pronoun any noun or pronoun will be written and first form of the verb will be written if subject first form of the verb s or es plus object will be written because uh, if uh, third person or any singular name has so far been used in the sentence we use s or es with first form and subject noun or pronoun 
first form of the verb and will shall plus object will be used in the second part of the sentence which is uh, the consequence result or outcome part if we respect our teacher now if has been written first comma will have to be placed uh, in between two parts of the sentence if we respect our teachers we shall succeed if he goes to islamabad now comma you can see in between the two parts of a sentence she will meet her mom if she goes to islamabad she will meet her mom these are the first conditional sentences if uh, she works hard she will succeed now uh, we are starting with the word if and uh, comma has been placed in between two parts of the sentence if she does not work hard she will fail it's a negative sentence does not has been used and first form has been used agar wo mehnat karega to pass ho jayega agar wo mere paas aayega to main uski madad karunga and uh, ga ga ending word would be ga ga and uh, gi gi agar wo mehnat karegi to pass ho jayegi hum mehnat karenge to hum pass ho jayenge and uh, similarly other type of sentences which are ending ending alphabets are ga ga or gi gi or ge ge you should learn english you should have a special passion uh, to learn english uh, even the better english thanks a lot may allah almighty bless you please do subscribe my youtube channel and keep watching my all lectures and note down the important uh, rules of english grammar inshallah by allah's bounty you will be able to speak english fluently and proficiently